The United States being on the brink of approving its second coronavirus vaccine for emergency use. That should happen in just a couple of hours. Now, this comes after an FDA panel gave Moderna the green light to move forward yesterday. It has proven more than 94 percent effective in trials. And if approved, nearly six million doses could be shipped around the country as soon as next week. To help build confidence among skeptical Americans, as you said, Amory, Vice President Mike Pence, Second Lady Karen Pence, and the Surgeon General Jerome Adams rolled up their sleeves to receive their vaccinations on camera this morning. The VP said he didn't feel a thing. Meanwhile, multiple states are reporting confusion over the Pfizer vaccine after the federal government told them to expect fewer doses than initially promised, at least for now. In a statement, the company says it has millions more doses sitting in its warehouse, but they've received no further shipping instructions. More than one million Americans have tested positive for the virus over the past five days, bringing the country's total number of confirmed cases to more than 17 million. Yesterday, more than 3,200 people died from the disease. It was the third deadliest day since the pandemic began. Now, over in California, things are especially bad. The state is now reporting only 3% availability of ICU beds. David Begno reports from San Bernardino County just outside of L.A. Here at Arrowhead Regional Medical Center, just outside Los Angeles, they have no more ICU beds available. So people who need ICU care are being held and treated in the emergency room. And people who are coming to the ER are being triaged outside and inside the tents that are lit up just behind me. They have 128 COVID patients in the hospital right now. That is the highest one day total of the entire pandemic. And they gave us exclusive access inside the hospital because they wanted you to see the reality of what's happening. It's a healthy 33 year old, huh? Yes, sir. Right now, there is not a single available ICU bed at Arrowhead Regional Medical Center, as the unrelenting crush of COVID patients is simply pushing staff to their limits. Listen to this nurse. We're at the point where we no longer could take care of them. The wait is a lot longer. You know, the patients are really sick. <laughs> With no beds inside, patients are now being triaged and treated in tents outside. And then there are the frontline workers, like Albert Almador. He is a custodian at Arrowhead. Every day, wrapped head to toe in PPE, he cleans and cares for the rooms that house the COVID patients. I wonder what you think when you're in there cleaning and the patient is there. I pray for the patients as I clean. But for hospitals like Arrowhead, there is more help on the way in the form of a second vaccine, this time from Moderna. Yesterday, the FDA's independent panel on vaccines endorsed the Moderna vaccine for emergency use. Dr. Eric Rubin is a member of that group. What should people take away from the panel's nearly unanimous yes? I think the important message is that the panelists felt very confident in the vaccine. And these are going to be some of the first people in line to get the vaccine themselves and give it to their families. You know, all week we have noticed enthusiasm from frontline workers who were either giving the Pfizer vaccine to their colleagues or receiving it. It was like you were giving them a shot of gold. They were just so excited about it. For this nurse in Lafayette, Louisiana, it was giving the vaccine that was the real gift. On Thursday, she was able to vaccinate the oncologist that she says helped save her life when she was diagnosed with breast cancer. He saved my life 20 years ago, and me giving him this injection today, I hopefully could help save his. For me to be able to sit with the man who soothed me, comforted me, gave me hope, and here I had in my hands hope for him. That Louisiana nurse is my mother, Sid Begno. She's a retired registered nurse, but she now works part time looking after the health and safety of other frontline workers. I'm incredibly proud of her. And I was so touched when I heard what happened because she was giving back in terms of giving that shot, but also paying it forward as a former patient. All of it, I know, was a real full circle moment for her. Flat Anne Marie. And we salute your mom, David Begno, reporting for us today in L.A. David, thank you. And for more on the nation's worsening crisis, let's bring in Dr. Bob Lahida. He's a professor of medicine at New York Medical College and chairman of medicine at St. Joseph University Hospital. So, Dr. Bob, now that a second vaccine is on the verge of being approved for emergency use, will Americans have a choice on which vaccine to take? Well, yes, uh, Vlad, they will. Uh, here in the Northeast, we've been, uh, we've been receiving large amounts of the Pfizer vaccine. 
I would imagine the Moderna vaccine, which requires less refrigeration, meaning that you can store it in a regular refrigerator rather than at minus 70 to 80 degrees, that'll be available in the warmer areas like California, um, New Mexico, Arizona, and in the, uh, in the far west. Uh, that'll be more convenient, by the way, for tropical countries as well. Uh, so this is, uh, this is very, very good news. Uh, the Pfizer vaccine, meanwhile, is here in the Northeast, and we are all lined up to get it. And I hope to have mine this afternoon. Vlad? Fantastic. Um, okay, so then once you are vaccinated, does that mean that you still have to social distance? Hmm. Yes, you still have to social distance. You still have to wear a mask. You still have to wash your hands a lot because the vaccine is not an immediate fix. Remember, it requires two injections. For the Pfizer vaccine, it's 21 days apart. And for Moderna, it's 28 days apart. And you're not really immune until you get that second injection. And then the immunity develops over several days. So it's very, very important that uh, people understand that once you get the injection, it doesn't mean you can relax and stop uh, social distancing, stop washing your hands, because you can still get the infection. And that's very important to understand. In the coming weeks, Dr. Bob, we will begin to see a new series of ad campaigns that will try to educate people about vaccine safety and effectiveness. In fact, we saw, I think, a little bit of a, of a, of a preview when we watched the vice president and uh, the Surgeon General getting vaccinated this morning. Uh, behind them, you could see the sign that it said safe and effective. Um, you know, what would you like to see and hear from the federal government in an attempt to get people to become comfortable with this vaccine? I think, um, Vlad, we need to hear that this vaccine is a nucleic acid or genetic-based vaccine. It is not a new concept. We've had DNA vaccines in the past. Maybe 20 years ago, we were giving DNA vaccines. But now with the RNA vaccine, this is a really uh, a modern advance, and there is no infectivity. Uh, that The government has to tell people that there is really no chance of them getting COVID-19 from the injection. That's very important. And there are very few, if any, side effects with the first injection. The second injection, here's a new word, Vlad, reactogenicity. Reactogenicity mm. means your, your ability to react to the vaccine. And so you can react usually after the second shot with either tenderness in the muscle, maybe a low-grade fever, a couple aches and pains, everything that people can withstand. Believe me, if you get COVID, having a few aches and pains is nothing. If you get COVID, it's really bad. So I would rather have the reaction to the vaccine. But, you know, that's not in everybody. So I think this is very safe. It's very important for the government to tell people that, you know, go ahead and get this. It's a heck of a lot better than, God forbid, dying or being critically ill on a respirator for, say, a month or so. So in the meantime, though, the vaccine aside, because it's going to take a while for, you know, most of us to have access to that vaccine, there are still, you know, some guidelines that we're being asked to follow. Masks, um, social distancing. Um, and right now, federal guidelines on those things are being discussed. We could see the guidelines made public next month after really sort of nine months of this pandemic without any real federal oversight. So how crucial is it to have these guidelines in place to help curb the spread? I think people need to know what to wear. Um, I bought all my masks with me, but I won't bore you with them. However, in the hospital, we wear N95 masks, which are here. This is a, something that fits close to your face. We also wear glasses, goggles, and face coverings. And everybody should know that that mask is worn in, in a clinic or in a hospital. And regular surgical masks, loose-fitting masks, can be worn. Uh, in your supermarket travels, in your uh, going to the store, um, or even sitting in a restaurant if the restaurant is open. Uh, outdoor dining, you would wear a mask until you're ready to eat. Um, these federal guidelines are really important. Uh, it's important to know that people should always be wearing their masks and washing their hands. And social distancing is important. Believe it or not, I see people out on the street that don't wear masks. Uh, which is fine if they're by themselves, but if they're in a clump or a crowd, like you're seeing on the screen now, everybody should be masked. Everybody should be masked and be very careful and treat everything as though it's contaminated. 
That's good advice. Uh, mm. Some more advice mm -hmm. that people are looking for, Dr. Bob. Uh, next week is Christmas. What is uh, your advice for Americans going into the holiday? What are you and your family doing? Well, we're, we're being isolated, essentially. I'm, I'm having no guests over for uh, Christmas dinner. We will be going to church, and we will be sitting very far apart from other people in the church. In fact, the churches, uh, much to their credit, and the synagogues and the mosques, are socially distancing people, which is amazing to me. But they keep people far apart, and everybody's wearing a mask. Um, so that's what we're doing. We will not have relatives over for a dinner. Uh, we will not be causing the second surge of surges, which we saw now after Thanksgiving. That's what you're seeing in the rest of the country. We're seeing a, an uptick in cases all over the place, but particularly in California and in the West. We don't want that to happen after Christmas. But that's what Tony Fauci's worried about. That's what I'm worried about. That's what all of us are worried about in medical care, because it means that we're not going to have a very peaceful Christmas, and certainly the weeks after, the New Year's, is going to be the second bump. Yeah, those are definitely the concerning weeks. Uh, Dr. Bob, make sure you get to church early, because, you know, wayward Catholics like, like myself tend to show up at Christmas <laughs> if they don't show up on the, on the rest of the calendar, right, the rest of the year. Um, you have to have a reservation. You have to have a reservation to get into church. <laughs> <laughs> you do. Well... It makes sense. It totally makes sense if you want to be safe. Dr. Bob Lahida, thank you so much. Thank you.